teams. So you can have a look at them afterwards. Most importantly, unfortunately we can't do any more pastoral visits, Alex and I. So if you let us know if there's a phone call, if you'd like a phone call, or you know somebody who'd like a phone call, please give Alex or I a call. And Christmas cards at the back of church, I'm going to remind you again, please don't leave Christmas cards at the back of church. It's better if we just hand them out or post them through people's letter boxes if you can. Now we've got private prayer this Tuesday up at St David's and that's going to be the last one now until the 5th of January. And again with the pray and chat on Zoom on Wednesday, this will be the last one until the 6th. We've got church committee on the 17th of December that's possibly not at the Institute, it could be predominantly Zoom because it's getting really quite touch and go with the figures going up so we're just being very, very careful. And I'd just like to say thank you for all the fundraising items, by the little presents, all the crafting, Brenda's cakes, it's absolutely fantastic. Thank you for everything that you're giving. Everything else is, is on the sheet and take a moment just to set ourselves and we're ready to start. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace and peace be with you. Thank you. Our Advent prayer, we're going to light the third candle this week. And the response is on your sheets for Advent Candle 3. Heavenly Father, in the midst of a troubled world, you are the light and life. Send us your healing for those who are ill, your strength for those who are suffering, your compassion for those who grieve, and your courage for those who work for the healing and service of others. Bless our nation with the life-giving spirit of your love, and grant us your mercy revealed in the person of Christ your Son. Come Lord, bring us your peace, that we may rejoice before you with a perfect heart. Come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. Amen. And so we say together, Heavenly Father, all hearts are open to you, no secrets are hidden from you. Glorify us with the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may love and worship you faithfully, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus, we pray to you for sending light into the world. Forgive us for not opening our eyes to your light. Help us to rejoice in the light, so that your grace can illuminate the darkened places of our hearts. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you and set you free from sin, strengthen you in goodness, and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us prepare ourselves for the word of God as it comes to us in the readings of the Holy Scripture. Our college prayer for today. O Lord Jesus Christ, who at your first coming sent your messenger to prepare your way before you, grant that the ministers and stewards of your mysteries may likewise so prepare and make ready your way by turning the hearts of the disobedient to the wisdom of the just that at your second coming to judge the world, we may be found an acceptable people in your sight. For you are alive and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, 
to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations, and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God. For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness, as a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all nations. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. The Magnificat. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. For he has looked with favour on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm, he has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. A reading from 1 Thessalonians. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise the words of prophets, but test everything. Hold fast to what is good, abstain from every form of evil. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely, and may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do this. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand for the gospel. Listen to the gospel of Christ according to St. John. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. Then they said to him, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? And he said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord. As the prophet Isaiah said, Now they had been sent from the Pharisees, and they asked him, why then are you baptizing if you are neither the Messiah or Elijah or a prophet? And John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thumb of his sandal. 
This took place in Bethany across the Jordan where John was baptizing. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. <laughs> On the radio show that I have on Radio D side called Urban Hymns. I do a little segment called Badly Played Him on the Penny Whistle because I can't play a Penny Whistle. And for a year now, I still cannot do I still can't play a Penny Whistle. So I didn't think I'd burden you this morning with playing a badly played Penny Whistle. Instead, I'm going to talk about being a fiddle. One day there was a young boy who was practicing his fiddle. And he dismally scraped back and forth across the instrument. I'm sure if you've had children learning the violin, you'll know what that sounds like. And while he was doing this, his dog was howling and wailing in the background. Finally, his sister stuck her head in the room and said, can't you play something the dog doesn't know? <laughs> this story reminds me of every person who begins to play an instrument. Until they learn how to successfully play it, it can sound awful, and violins and fiddles can sound like a cat screeching somewhere. Today I'd like to talk, though, about not playing the fiddle, more specifically learning to play what's called second fiddle. This little phrase, playing second fiddle, has some definite negative connotations. Most people don't like playing second fiddle. Most vice presidents will always dream of becoming a president. A lady in waiting awaits their chance to be number one. And most theatrical understudies eventually want to become the star in the theatre. So the phrase second fiddle comes from the practice of having the best player of each instrument sit in the first chair position, while the second best player sits in the second chair position and plays the second fiddle part. A lot of people have a hard time playing second fiddle to somebody else's first fiddle, especially if you think they're better than the person who's in front. What's even more difficult is playing second fiddle when once you were in that first fiddle part. Having to play the second part when you were considered the best performer in the past. It can be embarrassing. And if you just put yourself in that situation, you can understand the feelings that those people have. Well, in the Bible, we learn a lot about people who actually play that second fiddle part. John the Baptist is one of the most worthy people that we know who takes this part under. You'll have heard of the song, I'm sure, by Beth Midler, Wings Beneath My Wings, of being that person underneath that does everything to prepare for somebody else in their life. Well, you know what? He was the best for a long time. He was certainly the best preacher in the land. Loads of people, as we heard last week, came to hear him preach. So he was really successful and excellent at doing his role. He was known throughout the country, and he was famous, not just as we said, for what he wore. He had a huge following, and they had to go miles to hear him preach. And then comes Jesus. I wonder how John felt about stepping aside and pointing his disciples to somebody else. How was he able to do this unselfish act and humble himself? If we put ourselves in the Baptist shoes, John the Baptist, watching two of your closest disciples walk off to follow another person, whilst watching the multitudes leave to seek out somebody else, I'm sure you can understand the possible temptations that John must have faced. He could have ignored Jesus and selfishly thought about the admiration of the crowds and the followers, but as we know, he didn't. For anyone to be able to play second fiddle, they must be self-assured. Socrates suggested that the key to wisdom is to know yourself. How many people, how many of us really know ourselves? How long does it take to really know who you are and how you fit in this world? For some people it takes a lifetime. We all start out, hopefully, innocently enough. But as we grow and are tempted by those worldly possibilities, when we can begin to experiment and learn, we find that we don't always fit into these neat little boxes that the world puts us in. Some people know, right out of secondary school, they know what they want to do with their lives. They know the direction they want to go in, and yet for others, the search goes on and on. 
John the Baptist knew who he was. He knew that he wasn't the Christ of the Old Testament scriptures. Even with his amazing preaching gifts, his large following, his amazing sense of the righteous, he simply says, I am a voice calling in the wilderness. Not a man, not a preacher, not even a prophet, but a voice, an instrument of God. John knew who he was and he was confident in his role as the voice of God. But when Jesus came into his life, he knew he had found a purpose for living. He was that voice preparing the way for the Lamb of God. And that's where it all has to begin. It begins with asking God what his plan is for our lives, how and where we are to serve. And this search needs to start with God. When we begin to find answers, we find that our niche might be display second fiddle. We find that we aren't meant for great things in um, our sort of political lives or stardom, but actually that the greatest thing that we can do for God and his people is to serve. I read a short piece in the paper the other day, it's about a father and a son called Nathan, and the father writes, the other night I was making the usual drink of water, tuck in the blanket and give a kiss round to bedtime. I came to Nathan last and I was in a hurry to get back to reading my newspaper. Nathan looked up and asked, Dad, can't you just stay for a little bit longer? And I was about to tell him it was time to get to sleep, but something in his eyes stopped me. I stretched out beside him and his arms were wrapped around my neck and his head fell to my chest. We talked about school, we talked about a few silly things. Finally, I said, Nathan, was there some reason you wanted me to stay? And he said, no, I just wanted to see if you would. And I think more than any time this year has shown that we need people to be with us, to talk to people and to find out how we're truly feeling. We never know how our role of playing second fiddle might actually be the support that someone desperately needs. If we are to successfully learn to play that role, we must be willing to lose ourselves in the task, to accept our responsibilities and fulfil them to the best of our ability. John understood that serving Jesus was the way to receive honour from the Father. Every Christian knows about John the Baptist, but only because he gave up his place that Jesus might be known. John was willing to play second fiddle for Christ. As we learn to play the second fiddle, we must trust in God to lead us, to get through the tough times, particularly this year, to help us keep our eye on the goal and the purpose that we have in our lives. We only need to look around our church buildings. There's some people like me and like our shared ministry team and our wardens and what used to be called the PCC, and we're all well known but I truly know there are a lot of you here today that will be doing things behind the scenes to make sure that when we come into our buildings they're as beautiful, they're as clean, they're as tidy and they're as welcoming as they are. And those people who play second fiddle never get the glory, but I am so appreciative of all the things that they do to make this church, to make this community of believers feel like the real family. So second fiddle is important to God. By God's grace and the power of the Holy Spirit, we can play that part and we can harmonise with the whole orchestra. <laughs> we can support and proclaim in our own way the one who should come first. And then the entire world can know that Jesus is the Lamb of God, who has become a servant himself. It takes quite a person to play second fiddle. They must know themselves, they must be willing to lose themselves in their task, and they must trust in Jesus. They must be willing to be a servant, just like Jesus. Amen. Please join with me in affirming our faith. I believe and trust in God the Father, who created all that is. I believe and trust in his Son, Jesus Christ, who redeemed humankind. I believe and trust in his Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God. 
without thought of the hurt that would come their way. May we too be willing to accept the challenges you give us, no matter the cost. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, whose son knew the importance of your children, watch over all for whom the last week of school is now so different. Those who have to isolate from friends, those who have missed out on plays and the normal end of term Christmas enjoyment. We thank all teachers for the perseverance they have shown over this year and their ingenuity for trying to keep life in school as normal as possible. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we pray for all who are struggling mentally, emotionally or physically. We ask your blessing on all who use our local food bank, those who rely on our mental health services, and those struggling physically through the pressures currently faced by the NHS. Give them the strength to face the days ahead and courage to look to the future. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, whose healing power is known to many, Watch over all who are sick at this time. Those known to us in the key, especially Molly and Tony Ashton, Mike Hallows and Beryl Hodson, and all known in the silence of our hearts. Give them peace in their pain and comfort in their struggles. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Father of peace, who receives us at our last, we thank you for the lives of all we have known and who have gone before us. We give thanks for the lives of Barbara Radcliffe, Darren Thorley and Jean Darby and ask that you give their families and friends strength for the weeks and months ahead. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray too, Lord, that you watch over the families and friends of all who have died from COVID-19 in the past week and give thanks for the tireless work of the NHS. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, who sent your Son to be our Prince of Peace, give us peace in our hearts for the week ahead. God, who sent your Son to be our wonderful Counselor, help us to listen to those who need our help and to follow his example in all things. Merciful Father, accept these prayers. For the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. So we turn to the thanksgiving. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is always right wherever we are to thank you and to praise you, God our Father and King forever, through Jesus Christ your Son, who in the fullness of time came among us opening to us the way of salvation. Now we watch for the day when the Lord comes again to judge the world, revealing the light of his presence, that we may behold his power and glory. So here on earth with the angels and archangels, and with everyone in heaven, we praise your name and say, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God. Father in heaven, listen to the prayer we make in Jesus' name. 
through the Holy Spirit's power, gentle as a dove. May this bread and this wine be for us Jesus' body and blood. Father, we remember when Jesus had supper with his friends the night before he died. He took the bread, he thanked you, broke it, gave it to his friends and said, Take this and eat it. This is my body given for you. Do this to remember me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine. He thanked you, gave it to his friends and said, Drink from this cup, because this is my blood, the new promise of God's love. Do this every time you drink it to remember me. Father, as we remember your Son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross and rose again, we offer you these gifts you freely give to us. Send your Holy Spirit to be with us and all who share this bread and drink of this cup. Help us to trust you. Bring us closer together and welcome us with all your people into Jesus' glorious kingdom. All honour and honour belong to you, Father, through Jesus, your Son, with the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, we both pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though okay. we are many, we are one body, for we all share in one bread. Jesus, the Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, give us your peace. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. And so in receiving communion, may the Lord bless you and keep watch over you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look lovingly on you and give you peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Amen.